guys, Dave Walters here. Answering a question from YouTube subscriber Paragon on how to control the distances from 100 yards and in. Um, I've got flight scope set up behind me here just to get some numbers. Uh, and I'm going to do it by using three wedges, the same swing with three different lofted clubs. So I've got 50, 54 and 58 degrees. My little wedge is just there against the bag. And I'm going to try and get a feeling for the same length of swing and try and control it. I know that if I was to hit 58 degree, I would hit the ball about 100 yards. So I want to make swings which are not a full swing with each of these three clubs and get a feeling for the distance and controlling the distance as close as possible. Now, this is something that I've practiced a little bit. So if I make a, a similar swing to what I would imagine, I should get these pretty close together. And it's something that you then need to get out and practice the feeling of. Um, I'm gonna make a practice swing. I'm gonna do it face onto the camera for a second. So I'm gonna make the feeling of the swing. I'm setting up sort of, you know, my feet at about a grip width apart there so I've got quite a narrow stance um, I'm not going to really lean too much onto the onto the left side or the lead side I'm going to try and stay quite even quite 50 50 uh, I'm not really going to grip down the club either I'm going to hold the club pretty much like I would do on a full swing near the top and I'm going to get a feeling that my arms move around about halfway back. So I've got quite a, a fair amount of turn but I'm not going to get the same amount of lift and arm movement. I'm only going to move them around about halfway back and then from that point I'm going to swing the forearms through. I want to get the sole of the club to just almost pinch the ground underneath the golf ball. So I just want to get a nice little feeling going underneath and then just let the body rotate naturally with the arms movement and round into the finish. I'm going to hit three shots with each club and then we'll have a little look at the numbers uh, as we go from there. So feet around about a grip width apart, ball nice and central in the stands for this one, fairly even and I'm just going to get a feeling of a halfway movement of swing going back and then through, get the forearms moving nicely. Okay, and from there you probably noticed that the speed of the swing wasn't really fast because this is more of a finesse move. We don't want it to be fast. We don't want to be thrashing at it. We want to control the distance. So nice and smooth, try and recreate that same distance, looking to just get the sole, the bounce of the club, just to pinch the ground underneath the ball. There we go, real nice pinch on that one. That's good. And again, we'll go one more and then I'll change club, change the loft. So, same with the stance, nice and even in the pressure. Feel that half arm swing move. And then just keep everything going through nicely. Okay, right, let's change club. So, we're going from 50 to 54. So from what is my gaff wedge in my bag down to my sand wedge loft and I'm going to do everything exactly the same. So same feeling with the stance, same setup position and I'm going to try and recreate the same movement and just have a look at what my distance then would be. Okay, and again, let's hit a couple more. Now, once you're your distance for this kind of shot, you could vary then the length of the arm movement. So I'm moving my arms halfway back feeling. You could make a movement that's only what you would feel maybe a quarter way back and just back and through. And again, with the different lofts of the club, see what distance you get. It's much better to find a distance from the movement rather than try and force a distance out of a particular club or a particular loft. So if you've got an idea of how comfortable you are with the movement and a particular loft and how far it goes, when you're on the golf course, you'll find much more consistency. Okay, now uh, one more. Okay, so same with the stance, ball position, halfway back, move of the arms. 
they go out and you know, really I can still that range with 10, okay. Right, so that's 50 and 54 done. Let's move on to what I would use as my lob wedge, 58. So most lofted club that I have, and I would fit full shots with this. So as I say, my sort of full distance, round about average about 95 to 100 yards. So, I wouldn't want to be making full swings with this to try and control it and under 100. So, same with the stand, same ball position, same length of arm swing. Okay. A couple more and then we'll, uh, we'll have a little look at the numbers that we've got off those three shots. Okay, so and again go through with the stance, ball position, think about that halfway swing back and just keep the forearms moving nicely, really look to pinch the ground as we go through. Right, let's have a little look at the numbers and see where we're at. Okay, so if we have a little look at them, looking at them individually first of all, starting with the gap wedge, so 50 degree wedge. So we'll look at the, the individual shots there, so carry distance there of 73, 77, 72. Um, so total distances 77, 78, 74. The first one, not as much control on that shot, you know, so the backspin was down a little bit, it wasn't the great, a little bit low out of the face, it wasn't the, the nicest of strikes. But, you know, if we look at the, the distances there, the average is pretty good. So from that half a swing feeling, if I looked at around about being 75 yards away, that would work really nicely for me. Now, if we then move on to the sand wedge, so 54 degrees of loft, we can see there that we've got a 58, 54, 55 on the carry distance, 58, 55, 56 on the overall. So spin rate's much higher, quality of the strike was much, much better as we go through there, and an average of 55 carry, 56 total. So changing a four degrees of loft has given me a change there on average of almost 20 yards. So the carry distance nearly 20 yards from just making the same swing but changing the loft and being able to control it. Moving then into my most lofted 58, what my lob wedge would be, 44, 47, 48 with total distances of 45, 48 and 50. So an average of 46 carry 48 total uh, and we see the, the, a strange sort of spin number picked up by flight scope there of 1549 for my 58 degree wedge shot so I think that might be a slight blemish on the on the spin calculation there but you know we're looking there at distances difference between the heart the, the most loft of 54 and then 58 only being around about 10 yards so 10 yard difference and then 20 yard difference then going from 50 to 54. So if we then look at the the dispersion pattern because being able to control the distance is very very important but being able to have a really tight dispersion pattern and get some accuracy from that control also needs to be addressed and needs to be looked at. So if we have a little look here at the dispersion numbers if I start there again with we start with gap wedge, so a four yard grouping. So we see one's a little bit to the left there and then two really close together. If we then pull that back into 54 degree there into the sand wedge, two yard grouping really, really close together on there. And then if we have a little look there at the lob wedge of 58, again, a two yard grouping. So it's not just controlling distance there, but also very, very accurate in terms of the, the grouping of those shots. So hitting those shots into greens, into pins, got more chance of giving myself a really good chance of if it's a short hole making a birdie if it's a longer hole maybe a, you know a misplaced tee shot if you like and getting yourself back into position saving a par and the scrambling keeping the score going becomes vitally important so I've there just done that on those 
half swing feeling of what my arms are doing. Um, you could do it on a three quarter swing feeling, you could do it on a quarter swing feeling as you went through there as well. And then just practice and just see how those numbers correlate as you go through. Make sure you pay attention to not just the control of the distance overall, but also your accuracy, so your alignment, your aim, your ball position will come into that there as well. And with the stance, so there's not a lot of sideways movement. You know, you want to be nice and stable making this movement as you go through. But again, thanks for the question. Uh, any more questions, post them in the comments box below. Any comments regarding uh, pitching, controlling 100 yards, controlling how I would view it against how you guys may view it. Again, post your comments in the box below. I'd love to hear from you guys as always. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done already and you can catch me on the social networks. The links are in the description below. I look forward to seeing you guys again next time. Thanks for watching.